Hello physical science students and in this video we are going to look at the behavior of light. Uh, we're going to talk about the difference between translucent, transparent, and opaque when it comes to the interactions between light and matter. We're going to uh, review what reflection of light means and we're also going to look at what the difference between regular and diffuse reflection are and and we're going to look at the index of refraction and how refraction can explain the behavior of prisms, rainbows, and mirages. So objects can absorb, transmit, or reflect light. Objects that transmit light allow light to pass through them. And an object's material determines the amount of light that it either absorbs, reflects, or transmits. This uh, piece of material right here is an example of opaque material. Opaque material only absorbs and reflects light. No light is transmitted or no light is pa passes through them and as a result you cannot see the object behind this material. Um, some materials, like this one right here, are translucent. Translucent materials transmit light but they also scatter it and so you can't see through them clearly and the object behind it appears blurry. Right here we have a transparent material and transparent material transmits light without scattering it. So you can see objects clearly through the transparent material. Have you ever been in a cave where there was no light at all? What did you see? Nothing. Without visible light we cannot see anything. And a quick review uh, remember the law of reflection. Light obeys the law of reflection, just like all waves. And remember that light uh, reflects off of mirrors. Light reflects off of paper. It reflects off of a table or a wall or a desk or any object that you're looking at. Uh, light will be reflected off of that. When light is reflected, the angle of incidence which is the angle between the incoming ray and the normal, which is perpendicular to the surface, that angle of incidence will always equal the angle of reflection, which is the angle in between the normal and the reflected ray. So if light always obeys the law of reflection, why can you see your reflection in a window, but not in a brick wall? Well, the answer involves the smoothness of the surfaces. A smooth, even surface, like that of a pane of glass, produces a sharp image because it reflects parallel light waves only. Reflection of light waves from a smooth surface like this is called regular reflection. A brick wall, on the other hand, has a very uneven surface, and like this one right here, that uh, causes incoming parallel light waves, here are the incoming parallel light waves, to be reflected in many different directions at many different angles all over. Um, the reflection of light from a rough surface is called diffuse reflection. Diffuse reflection does not produce an image, which is why you cannot see your image in a brick wall. Also, it's important to remember that even if a surface appears to be very smooth, um, at a microscopic level, it can in fact be quite rough. Um, a metal pot would be an example of that. It appears to be very smooth, but you don't always see your reflection in a metal pot. Some metal pots you do. Um, for an object to cause regular reflection, uh, the sizes of the surface irregularities must be less than the wavelengths of the light that the surface is reflecting. Another review, refraction. Remember that refraction is the bending of a wave caused by a change in speed as it travels from one medium to another. So when we have light um, here in this case that is traveling from the medium of the water to the eye of this cat, this is of course reflected light being reflected off of this fish, and it is traveling back to the eye of that cat, it is bending as it travels from the water to the air because it is changing speed. Light travels at a different speed from wa in water as in air. Now what were to happen, let's say, if we have light that is coming at a perfectly 90 degree angle 
to the surface of this water. And as it changes uh, from air into water, changes medium, it's going to be changing speed. Is it going to bend? No. The only time that light will not bend is if it is traveling exactly 90 degrees uh, because 90 degrees is the normal as well. And so there will be no um, uh, angle of incidence or angle of reflection because it is exactly the normal line. And in that case, it will simply change speed, but not direction. So a little bit more on refraction. Um, we know that the amount of bending that light does depends on the speed of light in each of the materials. The greater the difference in the speeds between the materials, the more the light is going to bend as it crosses that boundary. Um, every material has what we call an index of refraction. It's just a property of the material indicating how much the speed of light in the material is reduced compared to the speed of light in a vacuum. So light travels the fastest in the vacuum and then slower in other materials. Um, most materials also, uh, the index of refraction depends on the light's wavelength. Longer wavelengths will have smaller indices of refraction. Here is a chart indicating different materials and their refractive indices, or the index of, their index of refraction. The larger the index of refraction, the slower larger the index of refraction, the slower the speed of light will be in that material. We can see that in air, uh, light is going to travel fairly fast. And increasingly down this list, light will travel slower and slower and slower because these indices of refraction get larger. And so light will be traveling slower in those materials. So refraction of light explains why you see colorful patterns as light uh, travels through a prism. In a triangular prism, like this one, um, light is refracted twice. Once when it enters the prism, and then again when it goes from the glass prism into the air. Um, remember that a longer wavelength of light has a smaller index of refraction. Remember that in the visible spectrum of light, red has the longest wavelength. So you can see how uh, white light is being, uh, a beam of white light being shined through this prism uh, contains all those different wavelengths of color in the visible spectrum. And red has the longest wavelength, so it is having the least amount of diffraction, the least amount of bending. And you can see that when it emerges, um, it is bent the least. All of the other wavelengths of, of different colors when they emerge will be bent at different um, indices. And you can then, when they come out the other side of this prism, you can see how refraction causes them to bend differently and, and those colors can be seen individually. Refraction of light also explains why we see rainbows. Uh, just like prisms, a water droplet that would be in in the air, also refracts light. Um, the refraction of the different wavelengths can cause the white light from the sun to separate into the individual colors, as shown in this diagram. In order of decreasing wavelength, the colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The refraction of light can also explain mirages. A mirage is simply an, an image of a distant object that's produced uh, because of the refraction of light that occurs through air layers that have different densities. Refraction occurs um, because light waves travel slower in denser air, and that's because of all of the water molecules packed into that air, um, and light will travel slower uh, because that air is denser. Cool air is denser than warm air, so anytime you have a change in the density of air, uh, like that, uh, like in this case, or in this case where you have that hot um, surface, 
and you have maybe uh, this cool air above it, but the surface is really hot right there. Uh, you have that change in density, and light will light waves will refract as they pass through those air layers that have those different temperatures, and they can form uh, additional images of objects, like in both of these pictures. And if you're in interested in advanced ideas, look into the mathematical equation um, for the index of refraction, or what is specular reflection? What does that mean? Um, are materials that are transparent to visible light also transparent to other wavelengths? Use that information to explain why you're not likely to get a sunburn through a window. Or any other ideas or questions that you have, uh, bring those in and do a little research, and I look forward to seeing you in class.